Hi guys, it's Jeremy from Tops Cards That Never Were. Um, this is my first attempt to show how to make a custom card um, using MS Paint and GIMP. Um, this is my first video, so um, bear with me. Um, what I normally do when I first start making a card is um, have a couple versions of paint um, already open. Um, I had just have two um, two versions open right now, just one blank, and then one where I um, just did a bunch of cutouts of um, random logos and stuff that I would need in um, a good number of cards, and I have that one open. Um, it might be a good idea as you make custom cards to um, just go ahead and um, make a file like this with all the different logos that you um, you'll end up cutting out as you make cards. It'll just save you some time in the future. Okay, so um, what I want to do is make a 1991 Donruss card of Barry Lyons. Um, he played with the Los Angeles Dodgers in 1990, so um, that's what um, team template you'll want to make. Um, when I when I look for um, basic cards to start out with, I usually go to um, Trading Card Database, and they they usually have a good selection of cards, and they're um, they're just about standard size, and they're usually pretty. Um, um, I guess you would want to say like straight, so you don't have to um, turn it in order to get it um, the way you want it. So um, I went ahead and found the Mike Sosha 1991 Donruss card, um, just so I won't have to mess with the position on the card. Uh, so I'll go ahead and copy the image, and um, right click when you get into paint, and paste it, and it should be right there. Um, just resize the window a little bit. Um, now what I basically want to do right now is to cut out the whole photo and leave the Donruss logo and um, also leave the Dodgers logo. Um, you can zoom in, um, that'll help out. And I usually use the select tool. <clears throat> um, most of the time I um, use the transparent selection. Um, there are certain times when you um, can uncheck the box and um, not do it. Uh, I might be able to show you how to um, some of the things I do that for in a bit. Um, so you just um, right click once you have an area that you want and um, hit cut and then it will cut out um, whatever um, size um, rectangle that you selected and it will make it be the background color which is um, white. Um, it's always good to leave your um, background white. Um, there are a couple instances when you can um, might need to change the color on it but for now we'll leave it white and just um, kind of cut out around the, the logo until the area around it's transparent. Um, go ahead and um, show you something. Um, if it if you have a card with a like a white border like this one kind of does, um, sometimes that helps to uh, make the background uh, color a different color, like a one that's not really common. Um, I usually use this pink color and I selected the paint tool and um, it went ahead and made every area that's um, that I cut out pink and um, I just selected the um, pencil tool and what I'm gonna do is um, instead of using the cut tool um, I'll just paint around the area that I want to cut out and it's just a little um, a little more precise than the cut tool for small areas. Um, 
so we'll go back to a cut tool and just finish cutting out the the border. That's looking good. Um, and sometimes when you get to um, a section that's slanted, it might be a good idea to um, um, just use the line tool. Um, I always use the, the smallest one, the one pixel. And just kind of try to follow it um, as best you can. And that way, um, it it's quicker than using the um, pencil tool and you can uh, it's also quicker than using the um, cut tool and it'll take um, out the area that you want to take out and I'll just um, I'll just keep um, cutting around all the areas that um, I want to keep um, using the, the various tools that I showed you. I may go ahead and um, speed this part of the video up. So just bear with me. Okay, um, I accidentally messed up and I just drew a line through my logo. Um, and the good thing about um, this version of Paint, I'm not sure um, which version it was, but in previous versions it did not have a back button. I believe you could undo um, only one prior action, but this one you can go ahead and undo, I think, up to like 20 different um, things that you've done. So. Yeah, if you mess up, it's a lot easier to fix something than it was.
Okay, I'll go ahead and use the erase tool. And I'll start erasing where I made that line. And that'll allow me to take out a big area of the photo and hopefully not come too close to the line that I made and hopefully I won't erase any of the the name part. Okay, we'll go in um zoom in on the rest of the on the whole um, image and let me zoom in one more time um, do a couple lines to help finish that logo line tool is kind of tricky. It used to be in previous versions where you could just draw a line and that would be it, but now um, it allows you to draw a line and also um, like do various things to it, so you have to kind of click away from the line in order to kind of finalize the, the line, how you drew it and how you wanted it. It's a little bit of a pain, but I guess I can see why uh, Microsoft allowed it to be like that. Alright, so I'm gonna cut out the final parts of the picture. And go ahead and paint the whole section white and then um, right click and I'll paint it um, the background color again. Okay so now the next thing I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna take out the name. Um, you can do it a couple different ways. Um, I usually like to go ahead and um, select an area of the red, right click it and copy it and then just drag it over and keep doing that until um, Mike Socia's name is covered up um, you can kind of see um, towards the top and the bottom of the name part that it's um, and that's not all the way red, it has a couple different colors. Um, if you want to smooth that out, you can um, do it a couple different ways. Um, you can just kind of select some of the, the color that um, it looks like the majority of the area is. And um, do it with that little color picker tool and then just left click it. And then go to the brushes and uh, just kind of paint away at it. Uh, it's not that big of a deal to me. And if you if you zoom out, you can't really even tell. Um, when you do use that brush tool, it um, you can paint a pretty wide area, but um, if you'll look in closely it'll paint the majority of it the color that you painted but um, it'll also leave like almost like a lighter version of the color along the edges and parts in the middle uh, I try not to use the tool very much um, it's good for some things um, you can also go to um, GIMP and um, I do this a lot of times when I'm trying to airbrush a photo. Um, you can use the smudge tool and um, um, 
chin. I think that's the brush size so you can um you can just choose how big the brush is. I generally leave it um the size it is, but um just right click uh left click and it'll um it'll blend colors together. It does a great job. If you're trying to airbrush a cap or a uniform or even the background on a card sometimes um, it just it just blends two colors into one almost and just makes it makes it look nice um, the shortcut to um, the normal zoom is the one on your keyboard um, so that that does that but yeah um, GIMP GIMP has a lot of tools. Um, I'm sure if I would even um, figure out how to cut out stuff on it, it would be a lot easier. Um, okay, so the um, the basic card template is done. Um, if you want, you can just resize the image. Um, just drag the um, the lines in the border to the um, the side and the bottom, and then just save it as a PNG. And you'll be able to use that border um, again. Um, like if you wanted to do a Dodgers team set, you could probably just cover up the catcher part and um, just use that as your standard um, Dodgers template for the 91 Donruss set. Um, okay, so um, now we need to find a, a Dodgers photo of Barry Lyons. Um, I think this one should work. Um, I, I find a lot of my photos for cards um, actually using the trading card database. Um, it has a lot of minor league issues. Um, check out my cards is a good site. Um, just because with, um, with this card right here, um, that's the biggest image I'll be able to get. So I'll have to do a little editing where the name is to blank that part out. Um, a lot of times on check out my cards you can... Um, actually zoom in on a photo and um, you won't have to take out much at all um, so I'll just copy this image right click and um, put it on my um, paint file all right so if I were if I were to um, take the transparent selection off and go ahead and um, select my um, card template it would do that. It would um, cover up the image behind it. Um, if it's transparent, um, anything that's the background color um, will um, you'll be able to see through it. So um, it'll look like that. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit and um, just try to. Um, get that name out. Um, the only bad part is sometimes if you have a actual pure white um, pixels on the card that it'll it'll bleed through and show um, what's behind it. I don't think we have any on this, but uh, you, as you work with cards, you'll be able to um, tell. And sometimes it's a good idea. Let me um, go back. Sometimes it's a good idea to um, find a um, color that's pretty close to white, but not um, actually white, and just make the um, make the background that color for a second, and um, then um, any white pixel will be turned that color but it it'll it's basically close enough to white where you won't be able to tell and then just go ahead and make um, every background area inside the card white and um, then yeah just take the card over the picture again and um, then start 
trying to edit the parts that are unneeded. I'm just trying to find a, a section of color that's pretty close to what um, it is on the rest of that area. And slowly but surely we'll take Barry's name out. Yeah, yeah, that looks pretty good. Alright, so um, this card is basically complete. Um, actually, did not see that until I zoomed out. So this card is basically done, and all we need to do is write the name on it. Um, paint, it it has a lot of um, nice fonts on it, but you're kind of limited as to a card like this if you're right sideways. Um, so what I'm going to do is um, I'll just save this one right now. Um, I just basically have a... Um, custom cards um, folder and in it I have different years of cards and then um, I mainly do the fronts of cards on mine and just save them as the card number um, as many of you know on my um, blog tops cards that never were um, I have a bunch of checklists for different sets um, and that's how I get the card number um, so I think I have a Barry Lyons um, folder, so I'll just save this as 91D for 91 Donruss. And then um, go into GIMP. Um, how am I going to do this? Open that. Actually going to add a little bit. Alright, so I'm going to go back to my um, paint photo. This might be an easier way to do this. Um, and just take the, um, the main color for the main plate, the red. Um, Select as big a chunk as you can of it. And just make an area that you'll um, be able to type Barry's name and GIMP on. Just a little bit more and that should do it. Okay, we'll resave it and then open it again. Okay, so just go to your um, text tool. Start out at 12 and um, maybe Arial Bold and make it white. And I'll see what happens. Yeah, I'll make that a little bigger. That might work. Um, I always, um, when I'm uh, doing text in um, GIMP, 
I'll make a second text box and just type a random letter um, so you won't get the, the little color box thing around the area that you're going to type. Okay, and then go to your um, move tool, which is that, and try to get your, um, your photo that you're going to use in paint pretty close to um, what you're going to um, use on GIMP. The, there we go. The um the area that you wanna um move, you'll have to click on. I accidentally clicked on the other one. But now um looks like it should um be good when I rotate it. So I'll hit rotate, and then I will move this area just to little so the red will be on it and hit print screen and then we'll go back into paint and I'll hit paste and then I'll just drag um, the area over to the corner um, click a different tool and then click select again and then I will copy Barry's name, hit back, and um, zoom in on it, and just try to erase around it enough, and hopefully the angle will be um, good enough that it'll match with the Donruss angle. Uh, if anybody knows a way to text along a path, I would love to know their secret because um, lots of cards like this where you have to um, type a name at an angle or um, like on the 88 top set, you have to do that. Um, or, I don't know, like certain prospects cards that Topps has, um, they're names are in a uh, circle almost pattern um there's some sets like 89 tops 2006 tops where uh, the cards are just a pain in the butt to make because you have to text along a path and i haven't found a program where i can really do it as easy as i would like to um so if if you know of a way to do that easier please let me know all right so we'll paste that and I need to angle that a little bit more This didn't take nearly as long as I thought it would to make the video, and hopefully my phone is still recording. I have no idea how I'm going to upload this, and if I'll be able to speed parts of it up or not, but just hopefully this will um, just show you how to make a somewhat difficult card on paint and gimp, and allow more people to make custom cards uh, if, if it can help you with a um, difficult card then hopefully the simple cards are that much easier to make uh, that's not bad and 
and just select um, majority of the card and move it over to the top left corner of the page. Finish up, and there you have it, a 1991 Donruss Barry Lions card. I'll save it, and there you go. Um, so, I'll go ahead and post this on my blog, um, Tops Cards That Never Were, and um, if you have any questions on how to do anything else, um, just put a comment, or um, you can reach me on the um, Facebook Custom Card Group, and I'll be happy to try to um, do some other stuff on video, maybe. Uh, thanks.